bipartisan gang of six deficit plan may be the last hope on Capitol Hill. Here now is Republican Senator Mike Crapo, who's a member of that group. Uh, Senator Crapo, thank you for joining me. Uh, a lot of people in America waiting now for you guys to do something. What's, what's holding it up? Well, frankly, right now we have all kinds of politics going on that are, as I call it, toxic. Uh, the House of Representatives has sent two proposals to the Senate, that, if they send the one tonight over, uh, both of which are probably going to die in the Senate. Uh, in the Senate, there is really no plan available that really does deal in a realistic way with the spending problems that we have. And uh, I'm concerned that we may not be able to uh, resolve the issue with one of these two that is on the table now. Um, I'm hopeful that the Gang of Six proposal will receive greater attention. We're developing much broader support for it in the Senate. I think more than a third of the members of the Senate now have expressed an interest on a bipartisan basis to move forward with it. And hopefully, at some point, a comprehensive approach like that, about a $4 trillion approach, is what the credit rating agencies have told us we really need in order for them to uh, look away from their concern about downgrading American credit. I mean, the, the situation, Senator, it seems to most neutral observers to be the Democrats are not exactly showering themselves in glory here, but at least they seem relatively on the same song sheet. Uh, the Republicans are just completely split, aren't they? I mean, you have the Tea Party faction of the Republican Party basically saying, no, we're not going to sign up to any deal. Uh, all the ones who don't want any revenue from taxation, and they're just saying, no, we're not having this. Um, your party is split in two. How does that help America and the American people who are now 100 hours or so from the biggest financial crisis the country's ever seen? Well, I'm not sure I'd agree with the characterization that the Republicans are split in two. In fact, it, it's the Republican Party united in the House and the Senate that has sent to the Senate uh, the budget that was then rejected in the Senate by the Democratic Party, uh, sent them a proposal to uh, put some cuts in place and some caps in place that were really relatively modest in terms of the issue we're dealing with, and asked for a vote on the balanced budget amendment, which the vast majority of Americans support. That was rejected in the Senate. Uh, now they are proposing to send another proposal over that will t t try to uh, find that common ground, and it's already been said that that will be rejected by the Senate or vetoed by the President. And um, frankly, I think that the Republicans are trying to put forward alternatives here to uh, simply walking away from the debt ceiling issue and the debt crisis. And I again point out, the credit rating agencies have, have made it very clear that it's not just raising the debt ceiling that they are focused on but that if we raise the debt ceiling without some significant fiscal reforms attached to it to show the credit markets of the world that we truly mean business and that we are changing our fiscal policy in the United States, then they will still probably downgrade us. But, I mean, most Republicans at the moment have a completely irresolute view of any rise in taxation, whereas most financial experts outside of America say, of course that's what you've got to do. Uh, until there is less intransigence by the Republicans on that key thing, how can you talk about any great reformation? Well, first of all, the way we need to approach tax reform, which I think most of the experts acknowledge, is to reduce rates and reduce the tax expenditures accordingly and then grow the economy through the kind of stimulative impact that that kind of powerful tax reform would have. That's the approach we took in the Gang of Six plan that is agreed to on a bipartisan basis. And so putting revenue into the equation through the right approach by making our tax code much more competitive globally is the approach we should take and growth is a key part of the solution that being said the proposal to increase tax rates is one that the republicans across the board do not accept but i i think that's just one of those points where there is great disagreement the president refuses to accept a plan that does not involve increased tax rates the republicans refuse to increase tax rates and it's that issue that is one of the major sticking points that we've faced over the last three to four months Finally, Senator Craper, I mean, a pretty embarrassing day for Speaker Boehner to not be able to uh, push this vote through. Uh, what's going on there? Has he lost control? 
Uh, I don't think he's lost control, but it's very clear that the, the effort by the speaker to come forward with yet another, a, a third approach now to try to put something forward to the Senate that the Senate Democrats can accept is uh, moving so far in that direction that he's starting to lose votes on the other side. And I think what we are seeing in, this, in the House right now is that as the plan diminishes and gets less uh, real and less, less powerful in, ter in terms of its fiscal reforms, uh, we lose support. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I think it's very, very close right now. I don't know if I had to make a prediction which way I would predict as to whether the speaker will ultimately get the votes for this final plan. Senator Crapo, thank you for joining me. Thank you.